Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 18th, 2023. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Well, welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, 698. Oh. Two towards 700 and uh uh uh, happy pre june 19th or juneteenth there you go yes actually considered a national holiday i believe so it is a national holiday i believe there's no reasons why why i have tomorrow off ah well i do not oh then i work in government sorry for you Neither do I. <laughs> Darn it. Not, a, not uh, everybody's caught up to that. <laughs> well, thanks. Anyway. Thankfully, my client is, but let's. Let's talk about. <laughs> well done. Good one. Yeah. Yeah, Good I one. did get a little bit of the ass, but that's that's okay. So it's one of those episodes where we're talking about something, something that's been. Part of our community for quite a few years. And I think it's been relatively recently, though, that two of the co-hosts have acquired this particular device. And one who has not. Mm. Who does not have any expertise has an awareness, has watched Bear City 2 when the power shortage. (laughs) And there was a lack of snoring, and then all of a sudden there was a bunch of... (laughs) (laughs) Which is not quite how that works. (laughs) No, but it was funny. It It sure was. It was. (laughs) <laughs> what happens when you bring a twink to a bear party or a bear weekend Anyways. Word. One, what one is o, this one device o, scary things. well so uh, as we become cubs of a certain age <clears throat> our bodies also change <laughs> and along with that comes you know um one of the most ubiquitous accessories of the bear community. <laughs> Infamously Final. at bear runs. <laughs> if it's a, if it's a newer hotel, you're guaranteed to have enough fucking outlets <laughs> to put all your shit in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do you have a CPAP or a BiPAP? Yeah. Have you been avoiding getting tested for one? Mm. Nope. Uh, so yeah, we as hosts, co-hosts, as Jeff was alluding to, two of us, um, have become recent, uh, CPAP users. Um, I'm the oldest, uh, in terms of using the CPAP. I think it's been going on three years for me. Okay. Cause mine was actually during COVID, Mm. um, when I acquired mine. Strange as that may seem. Wow. Yeah. Um, oh no, maybe it was in 2019. That would make it four years. Gosh, I have to really think about that. I can't yeah. quite recall. Um, I, had to, I had to look mine stuff up. 
Uh, no, I think it was 2020. Summer of 2020, as COVID was going on when it, when it happened. I don't think it was 2019. Um, I ended up getting a sleep study, and then um, which I had been putting off for years. Um, mm. People had said to me, people who had slumbered in my presence, we'll say, um, had said to me actually about, uh, have you thought about getting a sleep study or whatever? And I was like, why? <laughs> they, were like, well, they were like, bitch, you loud. <laughs> I don't mean that like that when we having you know good you know fun times like loud like oh yeah but like when you are deep in slumber it sounds like you ain't breathing that's that's yeah that's yeah. that's the tea so well and, and that's what I mean is like um I will fully admit probably three to five years sooner I could have probably gone and had a study done and probably would have benefited from it mm-hmm. um. So yeah, CPAPs. They they're kind of a they're kind of the the known accessory item, as I said, of the bear community because um, you know, you go camping, gotta have electric, gotta have a generator, gotta have something to be able to to plug into. Uh go to a bear run, leather event, pup event, doesn't matter if you're staying overnight, going to a friend's house. Um, you know, even if you're just like crashing on the couch or whatever, it's like you got a you got an extension cord, a multi plug, something like it, like you know. Tap it too because uh, CPAPs run off of you know electricity. So for those that may not necessarily know what we're referring to, the first thing to be aware of is that there is a condition called sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. So and we're gonna have a couple links um, on the the website for this in, in case folks aren't necessarily aware. But basically, um, sleep apnea is a condition in which you uh, kind of don't sleep or you know breathe when you sleep. Yeah. Um, so basically what happens is the body doesn't take in air, uh, take in oxygen, um, and then you end up uh, kind of exasperating. And so the body kind of, if you've ever seen somebody who has sleep apnea, like if you've like watched it, it's kind of alarming, honestly, mm-hmm. because they stop breathing, basically. Um the body doesn't go through a normal cycle to breathe in and then exhale. Typically the body exhales, but then it doesn't inhale. Mm-hmm. So that you, it's like they're holding their breath uh, kind of. And so consequently um, it causes a lot of issues. So there are two types of sleep apnea, obstructive and central. Um, obstructive is when the upper airway is blocked um, a lot of the time in the bear community, this is what it is because of basically we fat, we we big, we put on a lot of weight, um, the tissue in the throat area, and that um, becomes uh, sizable, like in terms of like it, it it's easier to close off your, your airway if you're breathing. Um, you could also have large tonsils, you could have a different thing in terms of your hormones, that kind of stuff. Um, right. Central sleep apnea is when your brain does not send the signal Mm. that you need to breathe yeah um obviously that's a lot more com- you know complicated and, and harsher in terms of a condition yeah um in terms of that but anyways you can get a sleep study done to get a diagnosis and then once that's done they typically recommend if you do have uh certain qualifications in terms of your sleep apnea like it's on a graded scale um and most of the time people talk about how many times you don't breathe in a minute or within the hour and that um, is the key indication of it. And you don't have to be a bigger person. I've known many a person actually who is like a trimmer build who mm-hmm. actually has um, sleep apnea. Yeah. Uh, so it's not necessarily that all big people have to have CPAPs or have sleep apnea. Um, right. But it's... It's just one of the potential symptoms. Right. Or causes. Right. And then the CPAP, as we've been mentioning, so it's actually the device that actually gives you the ability to um, breathe regularly while you are resting. So it stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Basically, it's a machine that pushes air into the body. And I know that might seem a little alarming, but now compared to 10, 15, 20 years ago, devices are very gentle and they have a lot of like sophisticated measurements. And so... Um, I know when I started and I got my first CPAP, I hated it 
for mm. like the first three days. And luckily they checked in on me um, to see how I was doing with it. And I told them that I really didn't enjoy it, especially when I first put it on. And they said, okay, well, there's a mechanism you can turn on. And actually they did it remotely because that's how sophisticated my machine is. Um, and they put in what's called ramp. Yep. And, and ramp is where you go from a lower air pressure up. It builds up in right. the first like half hour. And I've had it that way ever since. I absolutely appreciate it. Um, so basically it isn't like, you know, being blasted with mm-hmm. air right when Which you first is start. Funny because you have one that you ha- they had to tell it to ramp. Mine automatically did it. Well, so mine it's built in as a feature, but when it was shipped automatically from the, the manufacturer, you had to turn that feature on. Mm. And while I could do it as the end user, because my insurance was paying for it for the first 90 days to six months, everything basically was highly monitored. Mm -hmm. And so there there was the ability of the company or whoever to make adjustments and I had to contact them. Um, It was sort of a safety mechanism as a user lockout to keep me from basically fucking up my machine. Mm. Um, Because technically it wasn't my machine, it was theirs. (laughs) Right. I was paying towards it on my insurance, but it wasn't um, totally done uh, or mine. And now that I've had it for a couple of years, well, actually, I have a second unit, but that's because there was a recall and I had mine replaced. So anyways, <laughs> um, but basically the machine has tubing. Um, it can have a water reservoir to provide for humidity. I need mine pretty much year round. When I first started, I didn't need it during the summer because it got humid enough that I didn't have issues. But now I've noticed because of the air pressure, I tend to either get... Um, Dry yeah. mouth, uh, throat irritation, or nosebleeds um, mm. if I don't have um, some water, some distilled water in there for hydration. Like, yeah. Just kind of like a little bit of moisture. Um, and that has straps and basically, you know, it's a whole thing. People have all sorts of different configurations. Some people have like a whole face. Well, that sounds bad. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not the whole face. It's just basically over the nose and mouth is like a whole unit. Mine is just the nose pillows. Mm, like, okay. Which is ironic because I am a mouth breather since I was born. And that was something that was kind of the key thing is that people had said to me, they're like, you know, that I always breathed at night with my mouth open. And didn't that ever bother me or whatever? And I was like, no. What I didn't know is that actually it was bothering me. I just wasn't paying attention because I was sleeping. So then after I got the CPAP, one of the first things I was scared of is like that I wouldn't be able to keep my mouth closed because I spent over four decades of my life breathing with my mouth open when I slept at night. Um, you know, I didn't have a deviated septum or any other things in terms of my face and my nose, my nasal cavity that I knew of. I just didn't naturally breathe through my nose okay. when I slept. So that was something I was very worried about. But actually, uh, I got super lucky and I acclimated to sleeping with my mouth closed like within the first week or two with no issue. Oh, wow. So I didn't have to like rig up a home like strapping system to keep my yeah. mouth shut or I've like known, do different they, things i've known some people that get like there's it's, it's a chin strap like it's a mm-hmm. whole thing and then there are other there's oh since i have a cpap thanks facebook algorithms and everyone else doing all that shit that like catches everything i see all the time these ads for these mouth like like you literally, it's like tape almost. Mm-hmm. It's a covering that covers your mouth and keeps your mouth closed. And I'm like, that doesn't sound comfortable <laughs> to me. Right, right. No, I agree. Um, but I will say this personally for me, you know, it was it was a delayed like getting into getting and using it. But um, yeah, the first sixty days. I mean, they they most people have told me like when I first got mine, they're like, ooh. It's going to take a couple of weeks, if not a couple of months, give mm-hmm. it the chance. Right. Like if, especially if you hate it or find it very unpleasant in the very beginning. And yeah. I will admit the first week or so was, was a little rough. Um, but I quickly acclimated to it. And within a month, probably mm-hmm. about four or five weeks, I definitely noticed the difference in terms of how I felt during the day at work. And yeah. like that I had more energy and I was clearer thinking and I wasn't as like tired all the time um, right. and like had foggy brain, like sleep, disruptive sleep definitively can mess up your whole everything. Right. Um, and so that was, yeah. that was the big thing that I noticed specifically for me. And I will say uh, 
they I think some people kind of make reference to this. Um, I noticed my libido come back. Um, it hadn't necessarily fully left, but I wasn't <laughs> aware like how much my energy had been affected. Yeah. Like from poor sleep. And so that was a, an yeah. interesting, I guess, uh, benefit after. <laughs> wow. That's one, that's a fun way to put it. Um, yeah. yeah. So for me, um, it's a, it's a rather interesting story. So I have known for years that this was a possibility. Um, my mother, um, has always had, um, issues with her sleep. Um, she snored, she snored a lot. She snored loud. It was, it was rather interesting, um, because she was, uh, I think she worked third shift. So she would usually be sleeping during the day. No. Yes. Sorry. Timey wimey. This is years ago. Mm -hmm. So there would be moments where like we would be getting home from school and we'd hear my mom from like the front door, even though she was in the back bedroom, that kind of thing. It was loud. So I knew it was a possibility. I knew genetics, you know, could have potentially had a play in it. Um, mm -hmm. So I had always thought, again, this is me, you know, years later, I had always thought that I was a quiet sleeper. Um, and then I moved in with Jim. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm now sharing a bed with someone. And yes, we had spent, you know, weekends and stuff here and there together, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, had nights where we stayed together. But um, as we had started living together, both of us, we noticed were having issues. Jim actually got his um, CPAP machine first. Um, mm. He got his in... 2019, 2020, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to ask him. Um, but when he got his, um, we had that conversation, you know, because he asked me questions like, had you heard me ever like stop, you know, um, like I knew he was snoring. And at first, I don't think I was either. And also, I would also blame mine. And this is me being, you know, not wanting to really do this. I would blame mine on allergies and not being able to, because I'm, I'm like you, Gary, I was definitely a mouth reader, especially when my nose was um, congested. But I, that's what I blamed all my like potential sleep issues on that I was just not able to breathe because of congestion and all that stuff. With him, I had said, he had asked me about like, did I, when I hearing him and I did, I, I noticed the, the, the not breathing, the stopping breathing, the, the catching a breath and the snore of that and sound of that. Um, and then when he got the CPAP, it was going away very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then it came to me and he uh, clued me in on the same things that were happening to him was happening to me, just having the issues. So I actually went to my first appointment in um, 2021. So post-pandemic kind of situation. It was, a, you know, it was rather interesting. Um, had a conversation, then went to the sleep study. Um, and my big thing was I was not, I had no energy. I was having days where, um, you know, it's funny because you work, you're, I was working from home and I was working from home a lot more than um, during the pandemic. And um, I would be sitting at my desk here and at home and and even while I was working in the office just like I would drift off like just full on like dozing off taking a nap I would have to at lunch um take a nap mm -hmm. I was just that tired mm -hmm. um and I knew it was an issue and I knew it was a thing and I finally was like fuck it I have to do something about it so I went um got this got Talked to my doctor, got the referral, went to the um, sleep center, got that done. Um, I cannot remember um, what my number was, but it was high, like mm -hmm. 70. The number 70 is in my head, like times an hour, uh, an hour or a minute, an hour. Yeah. 
that I was, I would stop breathing. Mm-hmm. It was high. It was very high. Um, higher than gyms, which was scary to me. Um, so my issue was, um, I didn't get my, I didn't get my machine for four months. So I got diagnosed. I had to sleep study, had to follow up. They determined, yes, it's sleep apnea. Yes, you need uh, a CPAP machine. We will get you your CPAP machine. Because my issue was, Gary kind of hinted at it. There was a recall um, around 21, 22, um, where they were suddenly recalling machines for issues. I forget what the issue was, but there were several issues. And because of that, there weren't machines available uh, mm. because they, those were going to people who already had them. Right. Um, so it was funny because I was having conversations with my doctor because I'm like, when is this going to happen? Because I can't, I, you go through a company, an external company, a DME um, company to get the stuff. And um, I was getting weekly text messages from this company basically saying, we don't have a CPAP machine for you yet. We will get one. As soon as we get one, we will give it to you, get it to you. And I'm like, I really got tired of seeing it every week. So mm-hmm. I finally reached out to my doctor to figure out what the hell was going on. And they explained, oh, it's, you know, there's this recall and all this stuff. And we're trying to get them out as soon as possible. And, and um, supply is low. So I was like, fine. Um, and I, re- I remember she was a little bitchy, I will say. Um because I finally was like, well, what can, can, is there something that can be done to have this happen sooner? Because I was still having issues. I was still like tired and having, it was affecting work. That was the big thing was I was getting so tired that I would go to lunch and probably sleep for 40 minutes to an hour instead of like actually eating um, that kind of shit. That's what was going on for me. And she was like, well, we can give you enough, like a, essentially a lower grade machine, um, but you're stuck with it for five years. So it was kind of a, she, not in a not so cute way, she was kind of saying, you either have to take this, you either have to wait or you have to take this and got it, you're gonna have to, you're stuck with it for five years. You have to take it or leave it. And I was like, well, fine, I will keep waiting. And I finally got the machine in April, 2022. Mm. Um, and uh, I, one of the first things I did, I do the full mask. So mm-hmm. it's the around the mouth and nose. Um, and originally, it was, they wanted me to do the medium-sized one. And I was noticing I'm, I do open my mouth. I am a, a mouth breather and I'm a mouth sleeper. And I was, I noticed very quickly that my mouth would open and it would just, the mask would just slip right here on my teeth mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like I can't do the medium I need to do the large so I got the large ones uh, fortunately when you excuse me when you do the sleep study and they're, they're um, fitting masks for you I got like all three the small the medium and the large so I was mm-hmm. able to work it so that it fit um, and I already had a large one, so I just attached that one to it. And I found that that was a lot easier right. uh, for me. Um, now I'm, I've had it, I just this month. Yeah. Cause this is June. Um, had my year, like you go, um, I think I went six months after or a couple months after, and then you have to go back a year later and kind of to basically confirm that you still need it, mm-hmm. make any adjustments as it were. So I just had my first year um, checkup in June and um, it was really, it, I had a new doctor um, and I, I was, I was really happy. They were really happy with the numbers. Um, I know for me, as Gary mentioned, I am um, definitely getting more sleep, having more energy Um not nearly as not nearly as tired during the day. That's the big benefit for me. Um, and um, I, 
don't think I've noticed the libido thing, but maybe, I don't know. Um, well, know. The, the reason I bring it up, David, <laughs> is because I didn't realize how much I didn't have it mm. until after I was using the CPAP. And like I said, about a month into it, all of a sudden, like, actually, it wasn't even that long. I want to say it was two weeks into it. I woke up one morning and I was capital H, 80 point <laughs> font, like... <laughs> Like, Lord help any man that like can walk near me. Like <laughs> they were walking outside of my home. Like it was, it was. Wow. I was like, oh. And, and the reason it stood out to me is because I was like, whoa. Like I haven't felt this in a long time. And then it mm. occurred to me, I was like, oh, yeah. Like if you're not getting proper sleep, yeah. And you're tired all the time, and you're oxygen deprived. Like, and your body's like kind of in this constant battle for energy. Like it's going to preserve where it can, it can. And so consequently, yeah. like, you know, yeah. being interested in sex or, or wanting to get up or any of that, like takes it yeah. out. Yeah. And, um, I, uh, and again, you like, it's funny cause there was a lot of, cause I posted about getting the CPAP on Facebook and there was a lot of welcome to the club, you know, situations from my bear mm-hmm. friends and, it's funny to me. It's because it's not necessarily a club I want to be to join. It's a club that I'm kind of, <laughs> you know. Well, it, what is the sake? Isn't there something about like, like you don't want to be a member of a club that wants you or right. whatever? Like, you know, like that. yeah, yeah I, I rather, get it. It was rather interesting because, um, again, it. I know why. We have these, and I'm appreciative of it because um, knowing the number, and like I don't remember it now off the top of my head, but remembering, um, recalling the number and how high it was, and how often I was having to, um, you know, stop breathing, how, how often I was not breathing, it was more than minutes in an hour. Right. Um, and that sounds when you think about it truly, it can, it can become a little terrifying because again, when you're not breathing, oxygen levels drop, everything can be changed, blood pressure, all the things that rely on your body relies on oxygen to do a lot of things and functions and depriving yourself of oxygen for more than an hour within an hour seems kind of crazy when you start thinking about it and the potential issues that can come with that. Well, and, and, and so, I mean, what it really comes down to is like, you know, taking care of yourself and, and yeah. in terms of your health and that, and it, it I think we, <clears throat> I think people presume it comes with the territory. Oh, you're a big, you're bodied person. You probably have a CPAP. If you don't, I, politely recommend that you think about it and pay attention. Mm -hmm. And if you find that like, you know, you have um, high blood pressure and you have difficulties, you know, with um, exertion energy levels, um, like Damon said, staying awake, like eat, like you too. Now that you mention it, I've never been a nap person, but in the year or two leading up to my getting a CPAP, that's probably the most I took naps, Mm -hmm. not every day, but like you, you, get fucking yeah. tired yeah you know um and so you're just trying to figure out what's yeah you know what, what, the, the, what the best is. thing is right because and agreed it is definitely listening to your body and trying to um see maybe what the issue could be and then having a conversation a frank conversation with your primary care physician if you have one right um now, to kind of jump into this a little bit, um, CPAPs ain't cheap, y'all. Um, <laughs> like, let's 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 talk about that shit. Um, this you have to also consi- make that consideration, and I know it's not the the thing you want to think about, but sometimes you have to think about the potential cost. Um, I know. Even with the insurance I have, um, I am paying 
a bit to get it, um, get all the, the supplies and what have you. Um, so I'm on a automatic plan through my insurance and through the company. Mm-hmm. So every three to six months, I'm getting something new, whether it's new tubing, new masks, new filters, um, new um, reservoir. You're not getting a new machine. That's the one thing. You don't get a new machine. You get one. And according to what my doctor said, you get that one and you have it for five years. So um, unless something happens where you need to recall it or whatever. Right. So that's what happened with me. Um, My original unit was part of that um, international recall that so uh, there had been a study that was done that showed that there was a possibility that the foam kind of sealant lining, if I remember correctly, inside of the machine itself could degrade um, Mm. and potentially very, very like, you know, microscopic particles of said foam could be inhaled, um, kind of ingested basically, uh, but, you know, going into the lungs and stuff. And, you know, that that could be a problem and eventually turn into cancer or whatever. And so it, it turned into this whole thing and a lot of people were kind of freaked out and um, it was a very big recall. And of course, you know, um, Philips uh, had to, as the manufacturer, like pivot and like, determine like okay what do we do about this in terms of like getting another unit and will this unit have the same issues and if it doesn't where do we go from there like there was just a lot of stuff um and so i avoided the recall initially for like the first six to eight weeks because i was like there's so much unknown and it wasn't clear what was going to happen i didn't even know if my device was affected and then i did find out that the unit i had even though it was pretty much brand new um, was a part of the recall. And so you had to go through the step to visit the website, to put in your information, let the manufacturer know. And they would send you the replacement unit at no cost. You would send back the original, blah, blah, blah. Like there, mm-hmm. the whole program was figured out after about, you know, a month and a half to two months. But yeah. it caused a lot of like confusion and like anger with people. And, you know, they thought they were going to die. And oh, yeah. Now, to be fair, you know, some people legitimately have to have a CPAP to live. Like, like they don't like they can't sleep without it. Um, Mm -hmm. I can sleep without it. In fact, for the first time in a year and a half, uh, a month ago, I completely slept one night without my CPAP, Mm. which I did not enjoy. Yeah, I was tired as hell when I crawled into bed. And I was on my phone and I didn't put my mask on and that was it, Louise. And (laughs) I woke up nine hours later and woke up and I was like, ah, like I kind of felt off and I was like, what the hell? And then I realized, oh my God, not only did I fall asleep, I slept the whole night for a very long time without my CPAP Mm -hmm. at all. And I was like, well... I'm fucked for the day. Like, like my, my day is going to suck pretty bad because like, I basically, you know, reversed, mm-hmm. you know, what I had been doing for a long time. And don't, and don't yeah. misunderstand. Like it wasn't, you know, a horrible day, but it was uh, notable. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I had a day where I realized like, okay, I'm going to have some low energy or whatever and have to get through it and make sure I absolutely, you know, go back to using it right away. And I right. have, and and it's been fine, but it's, so I try to, Um, Mine actually uploads information and automatically sends reports. Mm -hmm. And I have an app and it connects Bluetooth, does all this fun stuff. So I try to check every like month to two months and see what the report says and the patterns and the mask fit and how many, um, you know, moments I quote unquote go without breathing within, you know, the hour and blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. Pay attention to the average air pressure. And mine's pretty low. Mine's like on average between seven and nine. Mm. Um, so it's not very high necessarily. Um, but yeah, like that was the weirdest thing is like, I had just had a random night. Yeah. Um, I mean, there have been times I've fallen asleep on the couch mm-hmm. and then wake up a couple hours later and I'm like, fuck, and it's like, you gotta yeah. go upstairs and your throat's kind of dry. And then you like, you know, put the CPAP yeah. on, try to like recover. But yeah. Um, 
so yeah, it, it's it's an interesting experience, but I had to have mine replaced. But the reason I bring up the one night without it was because some people were like, I can't not use my CPAP. Right. It, it right. absolutely helps me breathe at night. What the hell am I going to do for months until I get my new unit? And unfortunately, pretty quickly all alternate like options or other devices became unavailable. Like mm-hmm. there just weren't CPAPs period. available. Yeah. That's kind of where I was. Right. Trying to get one cuz there was a lot of like they were some were going to other people and some were just weren't available. The other um types um I had I, I've done it only a couple of times where I would not use the CPAP. Um, there was a time when you know not too long ago when we had our um, what's the word oh our our leak our our mm-hmm. um, pipe burst and what have you where we were staying in a hotel and we had done where one where we were just going to stay for a night I think mm-hmm. so. We just, we both actually had decided we're just not going to bring them because it made no sense. We're just going to have one night where we just don't, you know, don't take them right. because it's just a pain, again, to transport with them. Unless you have one that you, there are travel CPAP machines out there available, uh, but you, they're, you know, you had to pay for them and they're extra. Um, but we're just like, we don't, we don't want to pack all of that stuff because we're literally going to be staying for a night and then coming back the next day. Right. So we just were like, just, just not bring it. And it was an awkward night. And I think the main reason we did it was because we were, we knew the hotel we were staying in. Um, even with our CPAP machines, the beds weren't 100% comfortable. So mm-hmm. the sleep was going to be not the best anyway. So we're just like, we're just going to, you know, struggle through it for the one night. Um, I had one other time in recent history where I did not um, use the CPAP. And it was, um, funnily enough, it was, I was having a really, like, allergies were just awful. Like, my Mm -hmm. sinuses were clogged. Nothing was clearing them up. No medication. Nothing was working. It was just sinus. All of this was just inflamed and all that. And I... I had tried it one time, one day, one night, and after I think a couple of hours, it just got to the point where I just it didn't feel good. Right. So I just took the mask off, um, and then I think the following night, because it was still bad, I just like I'm not even going to bother because mm-hmm. I knew it wasn't going to feel good. Um, which is weird because it's technically blowing, you know, air through your nose. And- well. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, though, about that, David. Like, I have had one night, I think, in the years that I've used mine, in which I did have, like, some type of sinus infection or whatever. And, like, I hadn't had, like, I was just congested. and Like, it didn't drain out. And so, like, I went to bed and attempted to use the CPAP, and I was miserable. Like, you mm-hmm. just, and I don't have the mouth and the nose. Like, I just have the nose pillows. So, like, the air is being forced, you know, up through my nasal cavity and into my lungs. And it would, like, it just wouldn't come through. Like, yeah. and I was like, this is awful like yeah this is not an experience i want to have um one other time i woke up one morning early because i couldn't breathe and Mm. that's because my sinuses had like kind of filled up with mucus basically basically like yeah and so like the cpap really like wasn't working um Mm -hmm. and i kind of woke up and i was like not startled but a little confused and you know why i was waking up or whatever and then i realized like oh my head is full of junk basically and i can't breathe so i have to like you know go and take some medicine and try to like you know Mm -hmm. use clean you know facial tissues anything to like you know kind of drain it out i will say this prior to getting a cpap i used a neti pot with frequency um Mm. because i had sinus issues like congestion allergy stuff like with some frequency and hence i bought one like and i have a little ceramic neti pod and you know the like you know salt ionized solution blah blah blah. you can put in it and stuff so i used it every now and then um since getting the cpap i've almost never touched it Mm. because i think just having the cpap naturally kind of keeps that at bay that like you don't really get much of an opportunity i guess for things to like hang out in your nasal cavity fair um 
in terms of like, you know, allergens or whatever that stuff is. So, I mean, I, every once in a while, like I take, you know, some Benadryl or some Claritin or, well, and to be fair on the regular now in the mornings, I use a nasal spray, um, mm-hmm. for allergy type stuff. So it doesn't usually become an issue when I go to bed at night, yeah. but yeah, like if you can't breathe naturally, like because of congestion yeah. or whatever, like the CPAP is not going to help you. I'm at no, least just not in my experience. That's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's meant to apply pressure. It's not oxygen. It's not actual. Well, it is oxygen, I guess, in a sense. Cause the well, right. So the, the device, for those that don't know, it takes room air. And it basically, the machine sucks the room air and, like, sends it through hosing tubing through the, through the mask into you. Like, either your mouth mm-hmm. or your nose or your mouth and your nose. However your setup is, they're all a little different. Um, and so it is light pressure. And it's basically forcing the body to breathe um Mm -hmm. mostly it's forcing the body to take in air Mm -hmm. and the body naturally expels air so when the lungs fill up they naturally decompress and actually push out the air that's in there so the the whole oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange cycle naturally Mm -hmm. happens Right. That's why I think CPAPs work so well mm. because it's basically forcing the body to take in some air, but it's like, it can seem, especially if you have like a high pressure level and without that ramp mechanism, like it definitely is kind of, it may be very uncomfortable because it might really feel like it's kind of like, take it, bitch. Like, you know, it's just like forcing a lot of air pressure into you. Um so, yeah, yeah, I feel blessed that it's not necessarily that case with me. Um, but that also means for me, the unfortunate advantage is if I notice that the pressure keeps going up over a period of time, that to me is an indication that something's going on then. Where other people who have a higher uh, pressure amount might not have as much awareness unless it keeps going up, which it can only go so high. So, yeah, in that case. And my, like, mine is pretty high. And yeah. um, I think 13 to 17 is my range. I think. Oh, okay. 12 to, yeah, anyway. I mean, but, uh, uh, to me, high, which is kind of really capping out, is like 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, the, the air pressure that you're getting. So, yeah, I mean. I'm looking at a, because um, I was trying to look at some of these, the different types of master where and I'm looking at this, this um, image and I'm like, None of these look like the mask I have on. Jesus Christ, I would hate these. <laughs> like the this image that I'm well, looking at. And here's the really funny thing about that, David, is like, you know, uh, not that gay men are divas, but like there's this whole industry market of aesthetics about like the mask arrangement and the style and the straps. And like there's there's all these things um that just really kind of crack me up about you know the the stuff that yeah. you have as options mm-hmm. um and so I'm, I'm amused by the fact that you know some of them you know yeah they do they're pretty complex some of them aren't um i think it really kind of comes down to what your um comfort is yeah and and what you want uh yeah i'm looking at some of these <laughs> yeah <laughs> these <laughs> options some of them kind of look like a strange like kink torture yeah. thing <laughs> absolutely these are weird I'm, anyway that being said it just it i overall i would say if you i think listen to your body listen to yourself um if you happen to have a partner or partners you know that you're sleeping with and actually falling asleep with um Find out if they're maybe, you know, feeling a certain kind of way about when you sleep. Because um, that's part of it for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say, like, truly know that if you are having issues, there is a route to take to kind of feel better about it. Um, as Gary mentioned earlier, this is not just a... Um, big person's issue. This isn't just for big people. Weight and obesity and what have you is can be one of the causes, but it's not the only cause. Um, um, I know for me personally, 
um, I still have my tonsils. Um, mm-hmm. um, and that was one of the one of the questions that they asked me when I first went in. Um, and they did a check of them to just see if they, you know, maybe they're just inflamed or something is happening. That's not it. That wasn't the reason. It was I'm, I'm big boy and um, that thing. But it benefits, the benefits will happen and they will be quick. Um, I noticed within the first month, um, my energy was definitely like improved. Mm-hmm. Uh, my focus was back. Um, my overall just like, I just felt better, if that makes sense. Um, sleep is a big part of how your body resets. Um, mm-hmm. And not getting enough sleep, we, you know, it, it sounds weird, but not getting enough sleep um, can affect you. When the major like improvements for me and it sounds weird is I was sleeping longer at night um before you got the CPAP no after oh okay I I wouldn't uh it's weird and I don't know how to explain it other than just to say like before um getting the CPAP I would go to bed between like 12, 12, 30 and one in the morning mm-hmm. and have to get up at like seven, seven thirty in the morning the next day um, during the week. And the main reason I think I was doing it was I was kind of avoiding sleep or I had taken like an hour nap or two hour nap while during the day. So by the time, that time, quote unquote, came, I wasn't tired. Right. Um, which feels weird. It sounds weird saying because you're kind of always sleepy and you're always tired, but that was sort of what it was for me. I was, I would take a nap, maybe two a day. And then by the time we get to bedtime, I wouldn't be tired enough to go to bed. And I would almost have to force myself to go to bed. Mm. Um, now, um, I've been trying and it's not, I'm not the best at it, but I'll, I'll use this week as a sample. I had this whole week off, um, after the wedding, mm-hmm. um, I still was going to bed somewhere between like I would, if I were like a normal week going to work somewhere between like 11 and, and, um, midnight, I was going to bed every night about that time. And I was, of course, because schedules and your body adjust to it i was waking up about seven or eight in the morning like i had been working um and but i woke up refreshed i woke up like i had had a good night's sleep and that had to do with the fact that i had the cpap mm-hmm. that has 100 percent to do with the fact that i had the cpap yeah no, and, and I can understand that. Like, I mean, I, I've acclimated now. Like, I have no problem falling asleep. I didn't realize how much I had a problem falling asleep until I got a CPAP. And it probably was about three months in or four months in, in the first six months, I'll, I'll easily say. I quickly realized, like, oh, baby, like, I am I am out to the world in <laughs> two and a half minutes. Like, yeah. Like you, I acclimated so much to it that like, it takes nothing for me to be able, if I put my mask on to be able to fall asleep, Mm -hmm. Um, which is weird because it doesn't feel that comfortable when you very first do it. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially, like I said, if you, if they don't set it with ramp, like, Ooh, you're like, this is, this is awful. Yeah. Um, It's just not, it's just not comfortable because you really do feel like that it's, that it's a lot of um, no pun intended. It's pressure. Like, you know, and, and, it's not, and it's not natural. It's not your breathing mm-hmm. pattern and your like inhalation, exhalation. So that's why the ramp is so helpful because like it just, you know, mine starts at five. And so it's very light pressure and it just kind of like, like I said, mine is pretty low in terms of like the scale. So it doesn't have to do a whole lot to ramp up. 
mm-hmm. um, in that case. But um, I will say that I liked my first machine better than my second one. Mm. Um, I had the original Dream Station from Philips, where a lot of this came from, which is what caused the, the recall. Um, mm. I just like the build of it. I liked it more functionally better. The Dream Station 2, it just makes me mad the way they change the model so much. It, like, it has a tendency to like spill water like mm. because of the way it's built. Um, it attaches on the backside and you have to take it off. And the other one, it was a whole th- unit that kind of went inside and it had a lid that like closed on top of it. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was just a lot better construction, I feel. And they went in a whole different direction with the second one. And while well, this one's a little smaller and a little more sleek and blah, blah, blah. I just like is my one pet peeve yeah. about this, uh, this yeah. version of it. I'm like, well, yeah. But that okay. being said, to your earlier point about like how you have it for X number of years, um, I'm blessed that I have a good, you know, health insurance plan. So I didn't really have to pay much. Um, you know, I have a small deductible. So it was able to like quickly kind of take care of itself, basically. Mm-hmm. Now, the difference between the two of us, and I didn't know this, is so your insurance automatically sends you supplies, correct? My company does it and they charge it through my insurance. Yeah. Right. So your insurance allows that. Mm-hmm. Mine doesn't. Oh. Right. So welcome oh. to American medicine, kids. So in the insurance industry, they determine or dictate whether or not you can have automatic supply replenishment. Interesting. My insurance will not allow it. I actually have to request my supplies myself. So I actually have calendar reminders of all the different things because your My nasal pillows are separate from my headgear, from my straps, from my tubing, from my water reservoir, from my, from my three different filters. So like all of that is on different calendar, like replacement. Oh my God. So basically every two months ish or three months, like instead of like bothering my resupply company who I really have enjoyed using them, um, I've had like no, no real problems with them. Um, I just like basically every two weeks, something needs to be replaced, but of course they're not all on the same calendar. Like, so Mm -hmm. basically I wait until about every, I think it's 80 to 90 days. And then I just put in a request. Now, the thing I love about their website is I go to the patient portal, I go down to the bottom, I fill in the info and they have a checks box that says, please fill, fulfill anything I am eligible for. Mm. So I don't have to tell it what I need. They then check my insurance policy and against like what I last got shipped And then, so, like, I just did it about two weeks ago, week and a half ago, knowing that it was time, what I was surprised by, and I haven't been able to figure this out yet. They're like, okay, on June 24th, your insurance is eligible that we can send you another shipment. Mm. So something, and I don't know what the thing is yet in the cycle, it's one of the component pieces, becomes available on Saturday the 24th. So I don't know. It's it's probably a filter. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, like every six months, I think I get a new water reservoir and then or yeah, I think every three months I get new tubing. Every two weeks, you're supposed to get a new nasal pillow. Like there's all this anyways. Yeah. So which is kind of ridiculous. Like it it, it kind of creates a bunch of waste and it irritates me. So I still have all my stuff. Like I still have my two other tubes as backups, like the two different pieces of tubes. I have all of my straps. I wash them in my laundry like. So there's, there's like these things that you can buy that are like little net purse type deals that you can Mm -hmm. cinch up. Um, Women tend to use them for their delicates, Um, (laughs) but you can get them at different sizes. So I have a very small one and I just put my straps in it and then like tie it off. And then I just toss it in the wash with the laundry Mm. and it helps clean the, the head straps that like go around and collect like the oil and stuff from my hair when I'm sleeping. Um, I hand wash all of my like little nasal things, but I have so many of them. Like I don't wash them very often because I just keep like, ev- basically I, I get new ones every two nights. <laughs> like, yeah. like I just like, Oh, like, cause it gets kind of gross. I mean, you know, your, oh, yeah. your skin is constantly expressing oil yeah. and you know, dirt and that kind of crap. So, yeah. um, and I just like kind of get to a certain point where I'm down to like the last two or three and then I hand wash all of them in the sink. Yeah. Um, 
I don't wash the tubes as often as you're supposed to. I'm going to fully mm-hmm. own that. And it's not recommended that you do it that way. But I... I do it with enough frequency that it's taken care of, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's a whole thing. Now you can buy cleaning kits. You can buy like, you know, machines yeah. that help sanitize, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Although pretty much all the manufacturers say that that has not been technically FDA approved right. yet for using I, the other sanitation methods than just basically soap and water. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Wow. So weird that you have to like constant. Oh, I would hate that so much. I, just, I was I, not a fan when I found out because I I thought it was automatically going to come, and I think it was like in the first three months or something. And then I was like, oh, that's weird. So I actually talked to customer service, and I was like, hey, how do I get this automated? And they're like, oh, it's we'll put that into your file. And the person at customer care was like, oh, and I said yes, because <laughs> like I'm nope. like I heard that. <laughs> and she, and she said, well, I'm sorry sir she's like your insurance actually doesn't allow for automatic like fulfillment and shipping and i said what does that mean she goes you have to request it every time and i was like really she's like yeah that is a little unique she's like most insurance policies allow us to automatically replenish and automatically send it out she's like but yours specifically requires that you have to request it and i was like okay she's like well i'm going to send you a calendar like a like a sheet and it breaks down everything, how often it needs to be replaced. And you can fill in the dates and stuff. She's like, we recommend like you put it on your fridge or whatever, you know, in that way. So what I did was I just went into my online calendar and put everything in re- automatically repeating as reminders to pop up. Mm. But like I said, I did that for probably close to a year. And I got real tired of like every month, like requesting something and they'd be like, OK, we sent out your thing. And I get like two nasal masks. Yeah. And that's it. Wow. And I was like, eh. Okay. I'm like, I have enough stuff. I'll be fine. So now, like I said, I think I do it every three months and I basically get yeah. a whole package of stuff. Now, I will say yeah. this. I don't know about you, Damon, but my company for replenishment is very strict. And you get the package and it clearly says on the outside and on the inside, you have three days. And it is like basically like, listen, motherfucker, if you don't check this in 72 hours, like you cannot return it and there are no refunds, ah, there are no changes, end of yeah. story. To make wow. sure that you have the right stuff, basically. Right. Right. And when I did switch machines, they mm. did attempt to like they actually did send me the wrong stuff at first. And oh, I told wow. them I had the recall, I have the new unit, I don't need this water reservoir because it doesn't this doesn't go to this machine. Right. I need the other one. And I mean, I caught it in the first day because I know I like open the package pretty much as soon as I, it arrives. So right. I had to contact customer care and they did it. You know, um, what was wild is they said, we're not allowed to take it back. Mm. And I was like, what am I going to do with it? They're like, um, we don't care. <laughs> like we like they were. I mean, <laughs> they didn't quite say it like that, but the they were like, we can't take it back. We're not legally allowed to. Wow. So I, I donated it to charity like for a um, uh, a local thrift shop actually in the community does medical devices mm. like canes and walkers and right, right, right. chairs and all sorts of stuff like that. So I just donated it to that. I was like, yeah, nice. not open. Y'all have fun with it. Like someone will probably right. need it or use it. Yeah. I had, so it's funny. Um, <laughs> since mine is all automatic, um, I, I'll get an email usually or a text message advising of the like, it's time to do your thing, like re- re- request it. I do have to request it um, through the company. Um, and sometimes, which like, which is weird, it'll be like a day or two too soon. And my insurance will deny it in a way. Um, yay, capitalism. Um, but again, it's like, oh, we just, you know, wait until this day. And I'm like, okay, fine. Um, and they still do it automatically. Um, and mine is kind of like you. It's almost I like clockwork every three months. Um, I'll get a notification. They'll confirm like all the details if your insurance is the same or all that stuff. And then I'll send it through and they'll usually ship it out. Now, since I'm getting a bunch of stuff and I still have it every three months, the biggest issue for me has been I don't check it. Mm. Um, I've gotten, I got, I think this last one, um, I got the um, box and I think 
I was waiting. Yeah, I got it in May. And I was waiting um, until June 1st because I like, because it's, I wanted to have a date where I can start it and do it every 30 days so I can mm. change everything out. So I waited until then to do all the like changeovers of stuff because this one was the, um, the tubing, the mask, the, the actual headgear um, wasn't the reservoir. But so I just changed it all on June 1st so that I can have a mental day in my head of every 30 days kind of doing it. Um, and I just looked at my HSA and I don't see that I got um, charged. So maybe I'm to the point where it's, co- it's covered under my insurance, which is fair. It would make sense because, um, right. yeah, where we're at. But yeah, was- my stuff usually in the month of January, if not by f- halfway through February, I've already like met my deductible and like so okay. there's nothing really to to pay for other than copays yeah. um and how they they bill it but to be fair like i have some big ticket stuff at the very beginning of the year that kind of mm-hmm. quickly adds up um yeah so no yeah. it um it, it, that's interesting yeah that uh how they do that but again there's a whole method to the madness and how they they figure that shit out and i'm yeah. just like i'm just I grateful that i have one and that i appreciate it uh yeah. I will say this, the better the insurance plan you have, the easier the whole process is. True. Um, because one of my very best friends like has a CPAP and had it for like four years and mm. like didn't have very good coverage and had to pay out of pocket for like replacement masks and tubing oh, wow. and stuff. And I was shocked and I was like, wait, what? So like I actually gifted them a mask and they were yeah. like they were like you didn't have to do that and i was like no i did because i know what it's like to not have good sleep and like Mm -hmm. your mask needs to fit and the thing is like yeah well they're made of current modern materials silicone does kind of break down Mm -hmm. and it gets like loose and it doesn't keep a good seal and like they're like you they have a whole like nasal mouth like Mm -hmm. coverage situation unlike mine so like i was like you absolutely need to to have something um yeah you know so I, I didn't realize that that could be a thing. And then like, I have another best friend who like picked up a CPAP at a, a real estate, like auction sale or whatever, <laughs> like, and, and it's a smaller unit. It's incredibly portable. They never really need to use the, the water reservoir or whatever. Um, it works just fine. And they got a hell of a deal on it because obviously they bought it aftermarket i guess is the best yeah. way to phrase it like it was practically brand new in the box the family didn't know much about it or cared and like yeah and and i was like oh i guess yeah that's totally a thing you know that like people i mean technically once you've paid for it and you've bought it it's yours you can do whatever you want yeah with it, you know right <sighs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> sorry uh-huh i'm sure that wasn't intentional but um yeah, so it was one of the things that I realized that we have never talked about in the history of this podcast, which was just kind of silly to me because I was like, really? We've never talked about that? So um, it's a thing. The technology is at the best it's probably ever been. Like yeah. my first thought when I started using one about six months into it, I was like, Ugh, I don't know if I would have enjoyed this 10 years ago because mm. I think the technology would have been pretty clunky. And I wonder sometimes I've always I've wanted to reach out to people who have had or had sleep apnea and had to deal with this for like years and see if they're how they felt from their first machine, say to their second machine. It's like if they've been doing this for like right. 10 plus years, they've at least gone through one, you know, gotten a new machine because it's every five years. I would love to have a conversation with someone and see if there's been a major difference between when they first started using it to like maybe currently using it either with or without a new machine. Right. Now I will say this. Um, it is possible to go off of your CPAP. It is like your sleep apnea is not a permanent condition. True. It can be reversed. Um, if you're a person who yours is due to several factors, the biggest one being obesity, um, you could lose weight 
and mm-hmm. you could resolve your high blood pressure and other issues, and you may not necessarily need um, your CPAP. Um, I know someone who's a celebrity who has talked openly about the fact that they still use theirs. Um, they said, even though I dropped like half my weight um, and I'm much healthier now and I technically don't need it, I like it. So I just use mm-hmm. it. And, yeah. and, you know, there's no, their doctor said for them, there was no harm. At least that's what they reported. And yeah. so, you know, it, it is possible that you could stop using it. It's just like diabetes. Like if you're, you know, kind of pre-diabetic and you take medication, if you change your diet, your lifestyle and all those things, like you could stop taking those meds. Right. Um, same thing with high blood pressure and stuff. So if you're a person that, you know, gets diagnosed with sleep apnea, it's not necessarily permanent and it doesn't have to be, you know, like, uh, a lot of stress and stuff. Like you could make some changes and go in a different direction. So, right. Something to think about. Yeah. So you never know. You just might join the club one day. Right. (laughs) As we look at our other co-host, it's like not commenting. (laughs) (laughs) meantime I have other issues well that's true yeah that's fair might be another topic for another show who knows could be but you know what sounds like that's the end I don't know if uh like uh is appropriate for this conversation Fair. but or, it, it, it's uh, more like a more mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. imagine that so tell us your stories about a CPAP or lack thereof you can do that at cubsonline.com or shoot us an email at cubsonline at gmail.com leave us a voicemail at 361 we'll talk that's 361 and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. That comes online in the appropriate place of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can also join us in our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram-col or uh, subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning and recording these shows. You can see that bit.ly slash calendar-col. See a pattern here? We have various accoutrements, such as the made-to-be shirt, which both uh, Damon and I are wearing in different styles or flexibility for accessibility shirt that the, the Gary's wearing. See, you know, he just adjusts his camera to a better, better framing of himself uh, so he can show you better. Mm-hmm. Not throwing shade. Some of the, these uh, flexibilities for accessibility style was designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. Uh, you can also become a patron for us at patreon.com slash cubs out loud and uh, or send us some uh, donation at paypal.me slash cubs out loud. It does really help. You can also go to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify and rate, uh, review us. That puts us higher up in the algorithm. We appreciate that very much. Find me anywhere on the internet. It's box set box, puppy box, cub box, something or other. Or, and uh, uh, if, if if I'm saying anything, but I'm there. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you could find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is not very safe for work. For a safer work Twitter, you can do DMA Gamer 79. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. That's G A R B E A R 73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Mm.